Well, yes, I was very euphoric. I was very relieved. It was uh, a really, really great moment. You know, it was one of those, uh, you know, fist air punching moments. Really, really happy. But, but unfortunately, there, the atmosphere has gone a bit flat since then. Uh, as you're... No, 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 it hasn't been plain sailing. Uh, you know, I can hear the cheers from, from your recording. It was absolutely fantastic at that time. Um, and then we started to get some data back. Uh, so from the Ptolemy mission, we've had data, which is just absolutely wonderful. But the press conference, when we were expecting some images, it didn't happen, it was postponed. There's obviously some problems um, which we've heard about. So we're now just waiting. We've got to wait until tomorrow to find out exactly what's happened. And of course the clock is ticking, isn't it? Because Filet's got a limited battery life initially, hasn't it? How much of a risk is this? That's right. Well, that's right. I mean, it, it has its, its batteries there, which are only programmed or only have enough power for uh, a very relatively short period of time. And we've got to hope that the solar panels will kick in. The problem is that we have had radio contact and a lot of radio contact between the Rosetta mothership and Feli. Um, and so it, it landed, it, it settled, but it looks as if the actual drill screws didn't take and that it's just sitting there it's not actually anchored and that meant that it, it seemed to rise again and we assume from the radio signal that it's fallen again and it's actually on the surface but Rosetta sorry the comet has now tumbled a little bit it's turned in its orbit and Rosetta is over the horizon or below the horizon rather so Rosetta cannot get the radio link to the um, to Feli and won't for another few more hours. So we're not going to know for a few more hours whether that radio link can be established again. So it's it's been tense. Then it was fantastic, and now it's gone tense again. So after that initial infuriation, we really thought we've achieved the impossible. Perhaps now it isn't what we hoped for then. Well, we've had, some, we've had some great pictures. Um, we've got some wonderful data on plasma. We've got some amazing data, we believe, coming from the Ptolemy instruments. Uh, we've heard that we've got data down, but we haven't started interpreting it yet. So we know there has been some incredible data already. We're just hoping that there's going to be some more. Uh, this, of course, has been a pan-European effort. How well has that team worked together? It is extraordinary, the efforts that have been put in. Well, the European Space Agency, of course, um, coordinates the actions of all the space agencies of, of European nations, plus Canada, um, for, for some strange reason. Um, and the teams are funded par partly by ESA and partly by their national agencies. So the lander is funded by the UK Space Agency. It's funded by the German Space Agency, Italian, French, and so on. So there's a lot of international effort gone into it. And one of the marvellous things with the lander is the co cooperation and collaboration that has taken place among the principal investigators of the instruments because you've got sort of the power of a light bulb which has got to power six different instruments and they can't all have it switched on at the same time. So there has to be this cooperation to make sure things work well. And so far for the lander it has been working very well indeed.